Welcome back everybody to Aeromotive. Ready for another tutorial? Because we have a good one today. I want to talk about terminal strength, pull test, crimp height, and how does that apply to the field? We have a lot of mobile technicians out there uh, repairing wire assemblies and I want to make sure that they're going to be doing it correctly because the quality requirements are really starting to increase exponentially especially with all the different systems that we have on the vehicle today, and they are safety-related systems. We're going to look at three different types of crimps, and we're going to test their pull strength. The first one we're going to look at is going to be the standard B crimper, used quite often in the field. The next one we're going to use is your ratcheting type crimper. And then third, we're going to take a look at the auto feature. Uh, highly recommend it whenever possible. Obviously, you can't have one of these in the field but at least we'll give you an idea of the difference between OEM quality, better tooling, and basic hand crimping. So let's jump into a pull test. I'm go we're gonna get a little help from Nick. Nick has been trained and checked out on the pull tester. So let's see what he has to offer. This. All right, hello everybody. So I'm uh, sitting down with Nick. Uh, Nick has been qualified to work the pull tester and he's going to give us a quick demo on what the machine is capable of doing and how we go about pull testing the terminals. So Nick, if you want to go ahead and show us what happens on this unit, that'd be great. Sure. So what you want to do is turn first, turn the machine on. You'll see it start up there. And then what you want to do is go to the computer that is plugged into and open up measure light application. Okay, so once we have the machine on, mm -hmm. what program do we have to go into in order to calibrate it for the pull test? Sure, so what you want to do is go into the menu. Menu, okay. Go down to pass and fail limits. Okay. And we want to go down to lower enabled. Okay, and where are you getting this lower enabled number from? You'll go directly from the manufacturer will have a specific pull force that they want you to test at and pass at. Okay, so we do have a pass-fail limit, and that's provided by the manufacturer. Yes, yes okay. it is. Okay, gotcha. So we put it into this, uh, we program it into the pull tester, mm -hmm. and then we start the program, or do we start the machine? First you want to do is you obviously have to turn the uh, machine itself, and then right. set your uh, limits, yes. make sure that's good. Then bring it over to the machine, and yeah. make sure that it is connected. Okay, great. Now that it's connected, they're communicating with one another is going to print a report for us. Correct. Once we get a pull test, yes. they will show up all right here. Okay. And then we can export that to Excel yes. and we can print it out or send it over to anybody that's going to need it. Okay. Can we go ahead and start the uh, show then? See what of happens? course. So what we want to do is start here. Okay. This will instantly start taking the measurements when okay. they come up. So right now we're pulling the wire lead that was crimped by a hand tool, a bead crimper. And the pass limit was 20. That's a lower enable. And as you can see, it's starting to pull away. We haven't even reached the 20 mark yet. So that basically failed at about 17, 18. Now that we know that that's a bad and that's a fail, we can yes. just stop right here okay. and then hit it one more time to return it. Yes. That'll bring the wire back and you get able to pull it away from the die set. Okay, great. And then over on our screen, we have our report, which shows uh, the moments and readings during each one of those uh, pulls. So it calculated how many hits or how many times it would test the pull strength on that lead. Mm -hmm. 300 times. And 300 we, times. What we can do is then mm -hmm. hit this, export it to Excel. Yes. I got you. And then we create a report that we can provide to our customer. Yes, sir. Uh, that's fantastic. All right, let's go on to the next one because we want to keep increasing uh, the quality of the crimp. Okay, so the next crimp we want to look at is the one that's done by the ratcheting crimper, which should give us a little better, better quality. So Nick, you want to go ahead and start the music? See what happens? Good. 
again, based on the report, uh, which we can export uh, to the customer, we draw up the law of averages here, and the averages will tell us that it had a stronger pull strength. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go ahead and test this one that was done with the auto press. Uh, we showed that in a photo uh, one slide back. So, if Nick, go ahead and start. The parameters and the specifications are the same, but the type of equipment is different. Very good. So you can see where the terminal peaked out at a much higher value. And again, we're exporting. Mm -hmm. And in the, also, again, we're looking at the law of averages on that. Which is telling us at its peak, it was starting to hit the 30, 30 foot pound. Yep. So very good full strength on that as well. All right, Nick, thank you very much. Very welcome, Dave. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was informative. Again, it's just to give you an idea of the requirements that are out there and also what you can do to get as close as you can to achieving that OEM crimp. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you again on our next video. Have a safe day.